One of the biggest questions when buying a new system or upgrading your current one is how much RAM do you need and how fast should it be? There are a lot of things to consider when you're choosing. So how much or how fast do you need to handle your gaming, streaming, or editing needs? And is having a ton of really fast RAM gonna give you the best experience in all aspects? So let's compare all the RAM sizes, all the RAM speeds, to find out which one you need to have the best PC experience for your needs. Hey there, tech boys and girls, welcome back. So the most common size that you're gonna see if you buy a pre-built or even if you build your own, what size you're gonna start with is usually 16 gigs and sometimes eight gigabytes. But if you're wanting a good or great gaming experience, is 18 or 16 gigs gonna be enough? Or if you're wanting to splurge and go up to the 32 gigabytes or the 64 gigabytes, is that gonna be, you know, are you gonna get that amount of performance back for the cost that you're sinking into it? As you saw in the opening, I finally got my dream RAM, the beautiful, beautiful Trident Z Royal. Oh God, it's glorious. It's wonderful. I ended up getting four sticks of 16. And it was only like 315 bucks with a promo on uh, Newegg. So I didn't just want to do a video because I got the Trident Z Royal. Well, I, I of course wanted to do a video with this beautiful, beautiful RAM, just as really a great excuse to shoot some video of it and really enjoy seeing it shine on its crystals. So I've always stuck with 3000 megahertz RAM. It always seemed like it had the best value to the speed that you were getting from it and the amount you could get. The prices always kind of range and can drop even down to some of the slower RAM. So let's go ahead and hop in. Let's find out how much RAM you should be moving up to or uh, if you should just keep the same amount of RAM you have but move from 2400 megahertz up to that 3200 to get way better performance. So I'm gonna be doing my testing in three sections and that's gonna be one is gaming. I took Apex and Division Two, played them for 15 minutes and took the average frame rate and actually just averaged those together to give more of a, a range instead of one specific or showing a ton of different frames or slides. Then we're gonna be running my very goofy benchmark that I set up recently. Uh, I hope to kind of hone that in a little bit more, but it does stress the system a ton. There is just a lot of, lot of rendering to do. So we really are gonna be able to see how the RAM affects that. And at a certain, for a certain area or a certain amount, it actually makes an incredible difference. Now, Cinebench actually is very, very tied to the CPU performance. So it's not gonna be huge changes across the board. And sometimes they were really, really close. So you can at least see though how it might affect your CPU performance a little bit and give it a little more headroom. So starting with gaming at eight gigs at 2400 megahertz, it had an average frame rate of 66, then a big jump to 80 frames per second at 3200. Moving up to 16 gigs makes a huge difference of 80 FPS at 2400, which was the highest speed at eight gigs. And our FPS at 3200 megahertz was 10 more at 90. We begin to see diminishing returns at 32 gigs with our 2400 megahertz only rising three FPS with 83, but a speed of 3200 boosts us way up to 95, which ended up pretty much being our ceiling. And with a whopping 64 gigs, our numbers all eh, barely moved. 2400 is still just at 83 FPS and our 3200 just went up one. Just going from the fastest eight gigabytes to the slowest 16 gigabytes is a difference of 14 FPS. So if you are running in that lower speed, eight gigabytes, do yourself a huge favor, run in dual channel, get yourself another eight gig stick because it's holding you back a ton. In my goofy homemade export benchmark, eight gigs took forever at every speed. 2400 took 630 seconds and 3200 took 560 seconds. And here's the deal, 16 gigs was almost twice as fast as eight gigs because at 2400 megahertz, we were at 341 seconds and it went down a bit at 3200 megahertz to 330. 32 gigabytes saved us a bit more time with at 2400 down to 318 seconds and at 3200, we were down to 285. And of course, with the Mac Daddy 64 gigs, we had the fastest times. We quickened our export to 288 seconds at 2400 and to 275 at 3200. And it ended up being the same exact deal as gaming, eight gigabytes at its fastest speed, compared to 16 gigabytes at its slowest, so 24 or 3200 to 2400, 
the 16 gigs was almost twice as fast for exporting. So this is a huge difference. So if you are doing any kind of uh, rendering work or even streaming, just anything that's not gaming, you absolutely need to upgrade your eight gigs from 16 because there's no way you're getting nearly enough performance for having everything you have. So I'm gonna show the numbers for Cinebench. I really, it's not that big of a difference across the board, but I took a lot of time to go ahead and do the testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it, but there is a difference. With eight gigs of 2400 megahertz, our score was 3353. Then a gradual rise with 3200 to 3458 score. So as you see this testing for each round, it really is just all the numbers moving up just a little bit because like I said, the CPU speed is way more important and you know you do get that little bit of boost just from adding more RAM to the testing. So all that took quite a bit of time, but I am glad that I did it. I really, really wanted to see what the differences would be. So the sweet spot really is really fast 16 gigabytes for most people. If you're just gaming, 16 gigs of 3000 or especially 3200 is gonna be that excellent, excellent number for almost everyone. For someone like me, 32 gigabytes is a pretty good amount. If I was just, I'm moving up to 4K, so I have to move up to that 64 gigs because it just, uh, doing video editing or photo editing eats up RAM and just needs a ton of it. So, but if you're doing anything light, 32 gigs is gonna be way, way enough to get everything done. And that can even just stick at the 3000 megahertz. So one thing to certainly take away from everything, if you have eight gigabytes, you need to upgrade it because in no area is it okay to have just eight. You're killing yourself. If you see a pre-built coming along and it's only you know eight gigs or someone's selling you one, just know it's, it, no matter what they say, it's gonna be terrible. You're not gonna get very good performance, even if you have amazing parts. Because for some of this, I had the 1080 Ti in there and I'm being held back to 66 FPS at 1440p on gaming. That's ridiculous, that should never happen, and it's because of low RAM. So hopefully you can all make a, an educated decision uh, coming up when you're doing your buying, doing your upgrading. I hope that this helped in some way, but that's all I've got. Please feel free to uh, comment and ask any questions you might have. If you enjoyed the video and got something useful out of it, please subscribe. I'm trying to get that up and it's it's going well. Keep us, keep us moving up. I've got an amazing little video with uh, some parts that were sent my way from a fun big company. And it's uh, God bless you all, you know, just uh, get in there and like it and subscribe. But check in uh, in a few days, should have another video out. And love you.